Hello, my name is Justine DeYoung, and I'm a professor of art history at the Fashion Institute of Technology, uh, which is a SUNY school in New York City. Today, I'm going to be talking about empowering student participation through Padlet. Uh, Padlet is a platform I've been using for the past three or four years, but my use of it really ramped up during the pandemic. I'll be sharing what worked for me um, and also some challenges. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, if you're not familiar, Padlet is a web-based visual discussion or pin board, um, similar to Pinterest, uh, but much easier to use and collaborate on. It's also available as an app for your phone. It integrates well with Blackboard and includes three uh, Padlets for free, um, but it's, uh, a subscription account is also available um, to schools, and I'm lucky that FIT has one. Um, with the subscription, you can have unlimited Padlets. There are eight basic Padlet types, um, as I'll talk about in a second. So what it looks like when it integrates into Blackboard um, is what you see here. You can see it's very visual. Um, it's also interactive. I've made a screenshot so I can't scroll um, over to the right or add anything to the Padlet, but students would be able to. Um, it's also quite possible um, to also then uh, just click in this box and link out to the web version as well. It does create uh, columns in the gradebook if Padlet is an assignment in your class. So that is very, um, very convenient. Classes can be organized into folders. This is obviously with the school licensed version. Um, here you see some folders from a modern art class last fall. Um, if you only have three Padlets, I guess folders are not as necessary. There are eight basic, basic Padlet types. You'll see examples of all of these except for the back channel um, in my presentation today. They all have different advantages, um, but they all um, are um, very useful and interactive. So I'm going to talk through some of the ways that I've used Padlet in my class and what's worked well. Um, and also, as I said later on, um, some of the advantages and some of the challenges. So you can have students introduce themselves, prepare for class by finding art to be discussed, curate art movements, find artworks mentioned in readings, create timelines of artist lives, collaborate on research projects, write reading responses and reply to each other, uh, go on museum scavenger hunts, and then finally share lecture notes, comments, and questions. So here you can see a introduction padlet for my modern art class. For privacy reasons, I only included my sort of seating post here, introducing myself. Um, but it gets the students comfortable with using Padlet and also, especially in this remote online environment, helps um, put faces to names and give a little background. Um, and since my cats always make an appearance, I included a picture of them as teaching assistants. One of the main ways I use Padlet and one of the most successful, I think, is um, by asking students to do um, a bit of homework before a class discussion, say one devoted to neoclassical architecture. The night before, I asked them to post an image of neoclassical architecture to the Padlet. Um, and then at the end of class, um, after we've had the lecture, um, I pull up the Padlet and you know choose four or five of the images and talk through them with the students and see how they match up or don't to what we learned about in lecture. This enables students to have some buy-in, you know, they've uh, looked ahead a little bit, they've done the reading, they found something that re is relevant to the day's discussion, um, but it also gives, gives them the opportunity to test what they've learned, um, and it really sort of empowers them to feel like they can recognize these styles, um, even if they weren't ones that were included in class. So. Um, I showed you previously um, an example of a wall Padlet. Um, this is also a map Padlet. I haven't used this yet, but I plan to in my global fashion class to help students get a sense of where the art and objects are coming from. As a follow up to that assignment, um, I also have students sign up to curate um, different art movements. And so you can see an example of a curated Padlet for Fauvism. So, Different students posted these images before our class discussion of Fauvism, and then in the week after our class discussion, one student organized this, um, and um, they like to organize it by color. Sometimes they uh, drag them around to create blocks. Um, and then what I have the student do, the curator, is I have them talk through their curated Padlet for two or three minutes at the start of the next class. And this is a great refresher um, for students. It also becomes a great resource for students as 
they're working on papers or if they're studying for the exam, they can look back and see all the artworks from that movement together. So here you can see uh, the way I pitched the assignment to students. I had them sign up using a grid Padlet. I had created uh, empty Padlets for all the different art movements we were gonna be talking about. Um, and as I said, they organized their classmates uh, contributions, but then they're also responsible for adding in any major works um, that were left out of the Padlet so that it becomes a bit more comprehensive. And then they do a brief presentation. Again, it only takes two or three minutes, but it really uh, paid dividends. So another way that I've used Padlet um, is to have students find artworks in the readings. Um, so I have a textbook, what are you looking at for an online version of my class, but it's very few images. And so part of their assignment as they're reading is to find some of the images discussed in the text and add them to this collaborated, collaborative Padlet. And so this Padlet then um, becomes a sort of figure list or illustration list um, for the chapter. So they know what the art looks like that's being discussed. I've also had a lot of success, especially on my online class, um, having students create timelines for artists' lives. So they sign up for an artist um, and they um, work on this usually over the course of a week or two, um, adding important artworks and life events. Um, they also can collaborate and I ask them to sort of add an event or an artwork that they like to someone else's Padlet. Um, so it becomes um, the it becomes pretty complex and, um, and really is interactive and the students really seem to enjoy it. Uh, I particularly like to use it to bring in artists that maybe aren't being covered as much in lecture. That wasn't true of Mori so, um, but I created the list of about 150 art artists that um, are often overlooked and the students really have fun sort of digging up facts and important artworks by them. One of the greatest successes I've had with Padlet is on uh, research projects and having students collaborate on those research projects. Um, so here you see um, the first stage of one research assignment, which was to select a garment to research um, and to carefully describe it. So the students have done that, but you can see I also required them to respond to each other um, and add an additional thing they noticed about the dress or a detail that maybe the student forgot. So by the time they'd done this one first assignment, they already had a great description um, and um, maybe noticed some new details thanks to their classmates. So I'm not going to talk through each uh, week of the assignment, but you can see um, uh, each week they had to add something to um, their research Padlet. Um, they had to add a comparison image or a primary source. Um, and um, it meant that by week seven, when they sat down to write their papers, everyone was like, oh, I've already basically written my paper because I have all of my primary sources and I have all of my comparison images and you've given me feedback on all of them. Um, and so it was so easy. It was like I'd already written the paper. Um, so I liked to hear that. Um, but what I really did enjoy is that I really was able to intervene each week in the research process um, with the students. Um, because what I would do is I would go around um, and look at the Padlet and I would assign ratings. So here you can see um, this purple striped dress was the dress being analyzed. And these are comparison images found by the student and by two of her classmates. And um, you can see I assigned them star ratings. So two stars, three stars, five stars. And I told them, you know, five stars is great, four, four stars is good, three stars is okay. And you probably don't wanna use any one or two star images. And so um, this gave them immediate feedback each week on how their source search was going. And um, I told students, you know, after a couple of weeks, if all you have are two or three star images or sources, you should come see, see me and make an appointment and we can look for better sources for you. And students did it. Um, they really knew week to week that they were doing well or they were doing poorly. Um, and um, it meant that they were much better prepared when they sat down to write their papers. Um, and also, I have to say that students found better sources for, the, for each other oftentimes than they found for themselves. Um, you can see that this five star image was found by a different student. Um, and so um, it really benefited the papers tremendously. I also use Padlet for really straightforward reading responses and replies. Students like it way more than the discussion boards on Blackboard. Um, it's very simple. This is the stream Padlet, but it worked really well. I'm not going to read through the directions, but I put them there in case they're helpful. Um, and then I also have used them, um, especially during the pandemic, for extra credit assignments, um, for scavenger hunts to go to the Met or MoMA. You can see I 
said that they went to either museum and took a selfie and explained you know, where the artwork fell and what movement it fell into and why, um, uh, they would get extra credit. You can see I was able to assign grades three out of three. There's a maximum of 10 points. Um, so I could really quickly give them feedback on uh, how well they'd done. Um, and it was a fun way for the students um, to review the material we learned in class. Pre-pandemic, when we actually were going to special collections, um, I also used it um, to sort of keep tabs on what the students were up to. Um, so we'd gone to look at 19th century fashion plates. And so I had them all um, use the app. They took a photo with their phone. They posted to the Padlet um, directly from the, the library. Um, and then um, I required them to um, cite the image properly. And this enabled me to also give them feedback on uh, what information was required for citations. Um, so it was great to see what they'd found because I couldn't see everyone, um, everyone's books at the same time, um, but also um, to give them a little feedback on how well they'd done in terms of finding the citation information. And then uh, the last way that I've had them use it is to share lecture notes, comments, and questions. Um, I will say this was maybe the least successful in part because I didn't require them to share their lecture notes and so it was used sporadically. Um, but eventually what I ended up doing and finding more successful was instead of having a whole separate Padlet to devoted to notes each week, I asked them to just post their notes um, into the Padlets for the various movements that we'd studied. And that was much more successful. Students were much more inclined to add their comments or questions or uh, notes to um, uh, the movement-based Padlet. So it also made them better resources for uh, revision or for uh, studying for exams. So Padlet has a lot of advantages, some of which I think are probably obvi already obvious. It's asynchronous, it's visual, it's easy to use, it's easy to see what others are working on, and it's easy to collaborate. Um, but I'm going to talk about a few more advantages in a bit more depth. Um, one of the most successful things I've done is create a visual uh, weekly syllabus, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I've already talked a little bit about feedback, but it's very easy to provide feedback as well as to track participation. And finally, students often call it fun. So um, this was something that I tried out at the suggestion of my um, online learning uh, uh, instructor. And uh, it, it turned out to be very popular with students. Uh, what it is, is the, the timeline Padlet form. And here, each week, um, I created a timeline of what they should do. Um, so one was you know, sign up to be a, pure, a Padlet curator. If you click on this, it takes you to that Padlet where they sign up. And then it has all of their readings. Um, uh, and then if I zoom out a little bit, you can see it has the Padlet they're supposed to contribute to. It has a link to our actual class meeting. It has a link to the class notes and to homework after class. Um, and students really enjoyed this. Um, it was a little bit of a pain to set up, um, much more complicated than a Google Doc, um, but students really responded positively to it. It was easy to provide feedback. You can give hearts, make comments. Um, you can assign star ratings. You can assign grades. Um, the only thing I will say is the grades um, assigned in Padlet don't transfer to your Blackboard gradebook, so just keep that in mind. Um, but tracking participation is easy. You can click on a student, student's name and their, see their account um, and see all the Padlets that they've contributed to. So it's tallied up for you really easily. Um, and in terms of student finding it fun, these are responses to a question I asked at the end of the fall semester. What did you enjoy most about the class? I'll read you through a few examples. What I enjoyed most about this class was how organized it was. I really liked the timeline that was for each week's class. It was extremely helpful to have the Padlet there and to have the suggested readings. I also have never used Padlet before, but I found it super helpful when we would add artworks to each art period. Learning online is difficult, but this class and the way it was set up really was successful for me, and I have learned a lot. Another student wrote, I really enjoyed logging into Padlet each week and gazing at the art movements that we would be talking about that day. The curated Padlets helped me in picking out which style to compare in my essays, as well as to get a better understanding of each movement as a whole and the characteristics that it encompasses. And so, um, and then you'll, you'll see of my 24 students, uh, a full third of them mentioned Padlet as one of their favorite things. Um, I, I especially appreciated the student who said that having the timeline motivated me to read everything. Um, they liked that they were required to participate in and outside of class. Um, and they thought, again, Padlet was very fun, and especially the Padlet uh, were, uh, was a highlight. 
In terms of challenges, of course, um, there is a limited number of Padlets on a free account. Um, as I mentioned, grades entered on the Padlet website don't appear in the Blackboard gradebook. You have to manually enter them yourself. Um, students are less likely to post questions or link to related articles or memes um, than they did when I used Twitter. So it's a bit of a trade-off. I think they want to preserve the purity of the Padlet or something. Um, they're a little bit shyer about posting questions, I find. Um, and of course, the initial setup time, especially with the Blackboard integration, um, is a little bit tedious, um, but I think it's worthwhile in the end. So thank you for listening, um, and I look forward to taking your questions on Friday, February 12th from 4 to 4.30, or you can always email me um, at Justine D. Young at FIT NYC EU, or find me on Twitter or Instagram. Thank you so much, um, and I hope you come to our Q&A session. <laughs>